Lacey went missing Christmas Eve. She's 27 years old and she is over eight months pregnant. Law enforcement zoned in on Scott immediately. I knew he had killed her. Our family has known since the beginning that Scott is innocent. So you have someone who goes missing in this window of time and you have a felony occurring in this window of time. And to think that they're not related is a difficult thing to ignore. It's been 18 years and there should be answers to questions. I think if people step back and look at the evidence in this case, they're gonna see this crime isn't solved. Welcome into my gated community. You can call me the doorman. And here, I'd like to share with you stories of how some of our, let's say, guests ended up here. Tonight's story is about Lacey Peterson, who disappeared on Christmas Eve while eight months pregnant. The world was watching this story and hoping for her safe return. Her husband, Scott Peterson, drew suspicion due to his casual and nonchalant attitude about her being missing. Let me share with you the timeline of events. We started an investigation on the 24th about 5.47 p.m. That's when I heard about it. I didn't know nothing about it until I was having my Christmas Eve dinner when I got the call and then I drove down. The first person you focus on in a homicide investigation is the person closest to the victim and the last person to see the victim. And of course, boom, boom, we got both of those with Scott. He claims that he woke up in the morning and he and Lacey had breakfast together. They watched the Martha Stewart show on television. They were together. She ate cereal. She got dressed. She curled her hair. She put her shoes on. He thought maybe he was going to play golf, but because it was rainy and cold, he decided not to play golf, but to go fishing. Scott finished fishing that day at some point in the afternoon and made a phone call to Lacey. Hey, beautiful. I won't be able to get to the Bella Farms to get that basket for Papa. I was hoping you would get this message and uh, go on out there. I'll see you in a bit, sweetie. Love you. Bye. Scott's telling me when I interview him, I went fishing. I tried to call my wife three times. I called her cell phone. I called her house. And I'm driving home from Berkeley, and she ain't answering, so I'm thinking something's up. Then I get home, her car is in the driveway. So I entered through the back gate. Mackenzie came running up to me. Um, he did have his leash on, which isn't that weird. I can tell that she wasn't at home because it was quiet in the house. But I just assumed that she had gone over to help her mom with the preparations. So what does he do? Well, he goes over to the washing machine, he takes all the clothes out, he takes all his clothes off and washes them. Then he gets some pizza out. He drinks some milk and eats some pizza. I was actually in such a rush that I had the piece of pizza while I was in the shower. Once I was in the bath, I had to get the bathroom and got dressed and some nicer clothes. Scott was in the kitchen and I noticed that there was a message. There was a message from Lacey's stepdad, Ron. Scott asked if Lacey was there. I learned Lacey was missing when Scott called that evening and asked if she was at our house. And of course I said, no, she's not here. And immediately he came back with saying that she was missing. And I remember feeling that just a little agitated about that word, the word that he used, missing. I was like, how can you be missing? She's not missing. Then I asked if he called her friends, called me back again. Nobody had seen her. As soon as I told Sharon that she planned to go for a walk, Sharon said, go to the park. I'm going to meet you there at the tennis court. I remember running around in the park and yelling her name. And There's nothing worse than living up a trash can looking for your child to see if her body is in a trash can. But I remember doing that. When it's happening to somebody else, you think that's a horrible thing to happen to those people. And you think that you can imagine how they feel, you know. You have no idea what it's like. I mean, everything, every, from that minute on, your life is completely changed. So what scenario does that leave? An unknown assailant grabs her in a park where there are other people and spirits her away. Typically, that is not how an unknown assailant murder occurs. The murder goes down, the body's left on the scene, and bam, the killer's gone, okay? So of course the police start looking at him. 
Well, I suspected Scott when I first met him. Uh, didn't mean he did it, but I was a little bit thrown off by his calm, cool demeanor. On Christmas Eve, he, he was cooperative. In my mind, I'm not even thinking he did it yet, but I am documenting all this stuff. When we get to his shop to look at his boat, Scott tells me, I have no power in the shop, meaning there's no lights. This shop is in a strip mall and it's it's the middle of the night. There ain't nobody there, it's just us. And so I'm not even thinking that's suspicious. I just, okay, there's no power. Do you mind opening the door? I'll put my headlights in, I wanna look at the boat. So I, I put my headlights in and I take four or five pictures, you know, of the boat. And then later I called MID and I, and I talked to the supervisor to find out when the power was out for that area. He said the power was never out for that area. I want to show you some of Scott's demeanor and casual attitude. Now just think about it, if your wife or husband was missing, would you be this casual talking to police? I don't recall ever asking the husband or the wife to come down to the station and sit through a video interview. So today, just tell me about the morning. Um, okay. I don't know what time I got up, probably, uh, Lacey got up and went and, um, I assume had, she had some shit for breakfast, she mm -hmm. eats right if she wakes up, otherwise she gets sick because she's pregnant. Um, I laid around in bed longer, I got up at, uh, 8 o'clock probably or so, uh, showered, We were watching her favorite show, Martha Stewart. Watched a little bit of that. You didn't watch the whole thing, though? No. You remember what part you saw? I mean, I don't know what yeah. you know. Some cookies and meal, I don't know. Okay. Cookies of some sort, they're talking about what to do with meringue. Um, and I, I can't remember. Your house, you had the... The converted garage area is a TV room like? Or yeah. Is that where you were then? Okay, did you eat any breakfast? Yeah, I was here. Okay, and then uh, what the what? Um, when did you realize you were going to go fishing? Oh, well, that was a morning decision. It's either go, the morning or go play golf at the club or, or go fishing. Okay. Um, it seemed too cold to. But we got to the club, so um, you know, just decided to, you know, 9:30 or whatever you know, that. Mm -hmm. Just told me what she was going to do for the day, and okay, so Bob, she told you what she was going to do for the day. Yeah. And what was that? Um, she's going to finish cleaning up. Like I said, she's going to the kitchen floor. Um, take the dog for a walk, and then she's going to the store to buy for Christmas morning breakfast tomorrow. And that was going to be a involved prep. So that was her afternoon, just prepping for breakfast, and she's going to make gingerbread cookies for tonight. He was calm. His demeanor wasn't urgent. He didn't have that sense of urgency that you would expect that you saw from other people. But you guys, you guys haven't had any problems, uh, marriage problems. Everything's good. He's been married four years. Yeah. He just doesn't seem like the guy whose wife is missing. In the initial hours where normally you would think the husband would be like, stop talking to me and get out there and find my wife. You know, I didn't do it, leave me alone. But he just didn't, he hadn't, Something about him and the way he was answering questions, his demeanor was suspicious. Okay, did you drive straight there? I did. Get your boat in. How long did you stay in the water? Uh, felt like an hour and a half or so. Did you have a map for that area? Or would you just weigh it? A few days after Christmas, Scott Peterson gives an interview to Good Morning America's Diane Sawyer. Uh, the interview airs on January 28th. And doesn't, from the looks of it, it doesn't sound like Diane's too thrilled about his story either. About her? Yeah, from December 24th on. Did your wife find out about it? I told my wife. 
when? In um, early December. Did it cause a rupture in the marriage? It was not um, a positive, obviously. It's a, you know, inappropriate. Um, but it was not something that we weren't um, dealing with. A lot of arguing? No. No. Um, I, I, you know, I can't say that that even, you know, she was okay with the idea. But uh, it wasn't anything that would break us apart. There wasn't a lot of anger? No. Do you really expect people to believe that an eight and a half month pregnant woman learns her husband has had an affair and is saintly and casual about it? Accommodating? Makes a peace with it? Well, I... Yeah, I mean, you don't know. No one knows our relationship but us. Um, and that's at peace with it, not happy about it. When Amber Fry heard about missing Lacey Peterson, she called the police to tell them that she'd been dating Scott Peterson since November 20th and he was still pursuing her. Modesto police set her up with a tape recorder to record all future conversations with Scott. Here's a few of those. Safe message from phone number 209-505-0337. Received December 16th at 5.44 p.m. Hey, sweetheart, Scott here. Uh, 5.45, I was just giving me a call. I'm on my drive into the gym here to do my weekly five-minute workout. See how you're doing. Um, I'll try to get you to come up. Amber, can you hear me? You're clear. I know. Amber, clear your car. Are you there? Amber. Hey, happy New Year. Happy New Year. I wanted to call you. Thank you. Amber, are you there? I'm here. Amber. I wish you could hear me. I'm on the, uh, I think, I wish that you were there. I'm uh, near the Eiffel Tower, New Year's celebration is unreal. The crowd is huge. The crowd is huge? Amber. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year. I just stepped out of the room because it's so loud and crazy and I thought, you know, you're going to be, I knew you'd be calling and I was like, I didn't want to be in the middle of that because I would not be able to hear you. Oh. Oh, it is insane. I didn't think Sean's party was going to be so insane because I, she's always going to be quaint. There's not going to be that many people. And they're singing karaoke, and I was like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how are you? I'm tired, but I'm happy to talk to you on New Year's. So tell me, what is your New Year's resolution? Oh, I didn't think of what. You didn't think of one, and then somebody had asked about my birthday and what I was doing and everything else that I didn't know, so you'll be back by then, right? So what do you, what do you think you want to do? What do you want to do on my birthday? Something what? Good. Something good? So are we going to do the Napa Valley when you come back? Yeah. That'll be fun. I've never, yeah. never done anything like that, so I've been, you know, to a place to do that. I've been, you know, to massages, of course, but that's my extent of <laughs> being pampered. <laughs> that would be fun. I'm looking forward to those days. My New Year's resolution for you would be to not travel so much <laughs> and spend more time with me and Ayana. What do you think of that? Was that a, was that something on your mind or anywhere close? Oh yeah, it's definitely been for a long time. For a long time? You know, I was thinking there's things we should be getting the uh, video from that art show thing. Um Good. soon. Excellent. So that should be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, excellent. I can't watch it here though, unfortunately. No, yeah, well when you okay. 
said, well, so many things now adding up when you get back to do. Amber? Yeah? Amber? Yeah. Amber? Uh-huh. Amber? Yes. Oh, don't be gone, Amber. I'm here. Amber, I barely heard you. I'm right here. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Perfect now. Okay. You get all, I could hear you, though. When, when, you, really? when you can't hear me, I could still hear you. Oh, good. Except when I call and you said there's a blank message oh. and I'm talking the whole time. Well, yeah, no, there, there has been sometimes, um... By the way, those are amazing messages that I leave. Well, I wish I could hear them, because... I know, it's unfortunate. They're just incredible. They would, they would you... cheer you up, and then your heart would swoon, and then you would laugh and stitch it, and you wouldn't be able to function for hours. I'm sorry, baby. I wish I was there for you. Suggestion of a uh, word of advice. 
You never apologize to someone on the phone. You should come down here tonight. You're going to come down to my house tonight? No, I should have been. Really? And then what? You're going to come well, to my house well, and this no. and you've lied to me. Amber, no. Amber, Amber, no. I'm coming to your house tonight. But what I'm saying is I wanted to do this in person. Really? Yeah. So you want everything in your time, in your time frame of life? No. No? This time frame has not been, there's not much in it. Really? Really? It's just very coincidental, Scott. My God, Amber, no. You don't think? When uh, I told you, you know, when, uh, uh, the night of that dance, I said, when I was, I, I came to you because I was upset because I said, Sean knew about this before me. You told me you had talked to her. You told Sean that you had lost your wife. And again, what loss and sense are you speaking of? Exactly. Exactly what? Because there are many types of loss. Uh-huh. And what kind of loss was that? See, I can't tell you. Why? I just, I, I can't ask you to trust me, I can't ask you to believe me, I just, I can't tell you, and I, I will be able to in the future, if you listen to me, then I don't know if you will, I can't ask you to do that. You know, the only thing that would ever make me, or change my mind, in any way, is that she show, and she, she is found alive, or comes forward, or what? God, I hope she is found alive. We all hope she's found alive. We're all working for that. Really? Yes. Yeah. You think that's gonna happen? God, I hope so. Mark, do you feel that she's honestly going to be found alive? I've been losing hope. You've been losing hope? The last couple days. Life does not lose hope. That, it's hope, been, it's... that hope never dies until she is found. And how can you call me and talk to me at night and, and sound so joyous and everything else while well, you're going, to, I, that, that is just beyond me. Beyond me, Scott. Uh, I know you, you won't believe me, but I, at night, in, I haven't slept in weeks. Really? <laughs> and yet I have put on a faith to talk to you until I can tell you. And when were you yeah, doing man. this? When you got back from Europe? When no, I wanted to come down there. And, and everything else? This didn't even have to come about, Scott. I, don't I know, but she disappeared. Why you even developed anything with me and all these hopes or, you know, plans of futuristic plans together. I'm, I, I, I just, I, I... I want to tell you. Well, I'm trying to uh, okay. make understanding of, of, of all we talked about uh, yeah. this morning. Okay. I uh, went over to my mom's this morning, and she's gone at work, and I asked her if I could use her computer, and so I got mm -hmm. online, and then and, uh, just you know, find me what I could as far as what's going on with this whole case and, um, you know, uh, disappearance of Lacey and, you know, really, the only thing, oh, one thing, I can't say only, that I can gather is that, uh, Scott, you really haven't done everything you can yet. I mean, you, you don't speak in public with your family. You, you know, there's rumors that you... Yeah, there's a lot of rumors. What happened? What? How did that go? Fine. I mean, I, I have nothing to hide. You have nothing to hide? And so no. it's fine. So then yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't I read somewhere that you're... That, 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 that there's no possible way that you're a suspect? At this point, they haven't ruled that out, Scott. Yeah. Well, I mean, as you read it, and as you know this case is going, unfortunately, that is... Everyone's a suspect. I'm prime suspect, um, you know, and they, they all they say is they haven't ruled me out, they haven't ruled me in, mm -hmm. um, and, and they 
they can't talk about the case. They, yeah, and they've searched your house and your, mm -hmm. you know, warehouse and everything else. And uh, yeah. have they found anything? No. Otherwise, I wouldn't be, you know, free. They just, they, they have so little to go on. And yes, I have not spoken to the press because I am not the focus of this. It's finding Lacey that's the focus of I this. I know, but you're the husband. Yes, I am. And you haven't, you, you haven't went before public to, uh, to plead innocent in any of this. I am innocent. I don't, I don't have to plead it. I, I know I am. Everyone knows I am. Everyone knows you are. But Except for the media. Okay. And um, it is not the focus of me. I don't, we, we do not, we do not want a story of, you know, me or the family or it's the only things important are Lacey's description, the reward, the phone number to call, if you can help. Mm -hmm. That is the focus. So, you know, a question. That's why I'm in the media. A question. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, that's why I said that's why. When they did the candlelight visual, did you see that? Did you have it? Yeah, they had, you know, the family, our families on stage. Yeah. Like they were the. You. I was in the crowd. Why? Right below the stage. Because the focus is not families. There's, you know, yes. The families are hurting from this, but Lacey is hurting worst of all, hopefully not, but, you know, that is the focus. It should be, you know, this, uh, I don't know, worship or, you know, oh, the focus is so much on the family and that pain, but should be on finding her. I agree with that. It still doesn't make sense to me that you wouldn't, at one point, do that. I did a Good Morning America spot. You did a Good Morning America spot? Really? Yeah. Uh, the day after Christmas. And I made the producer promise me that they would show her photo and the number and the reward. Uh -huh. And I made her promise me that four times. Uh -huh. And they didn't. Really? All the shows was me. Well, Amber sure is doing a great job asking Scott all the questions I want the answers to, and I'm sure the police would want the answers to as, as well. And remember, she's heartbroken here because this is the guy she thought was her dream guy now. And then also, think about him. His wife is missing, and he's carrying on nonchalantly with this girl here. It's just too much, and it's amazing. Anybody believes he's not guilty. January 16th, 2003. Modesto police tell Lacey Peterson's family that Scott was having an affair and that he had taken a $250,000 life insurance policy out on her. Lacey's family severs ties with Scott after getting that news. January 17, 2003. The Modesto B. prints a story saying investigators have told Lacey's family that Scott was having an affair and had taken out a $250,000 life insurance policy on her. The family was also shown pictures of Scott with Amber. The volunteer search center at the Modesto Red Lion ceases operations upon hearing the Amber Fry news. So Scott ends up selling Lacey's Land Rover SUV uh, to buy himself another truck because the police impounded his. And of course the roachers are like, okay, when she comes back, what is she supposed to drive? And of course they're all, well, he can't afford all these payments, but I don't know. I don't know if you sell your wife's car and when she's missing. Also, he had inquired about selling their house. Uh, you need two signatures to list it, so he, he was just inquiring, I guess. The house eventually did sell, but after all this was over. April 13th. A fetus and a recently pregnant woman wash ashore one day apart from each other, right in the area where Scott Peterson said he was fishing. They turn out to be Connor and Lacey Peterson. Five days after Lacey and Connor Peterson wash ashore, Scott Peterson is arrested near a golf course in San Diego. Although he claims to be meeting his father and brother to play golf, he was carrying no clubs. He had $15,000 in cash on him, two driver's licenses, four cell phones, survival gear, camping equipment, Mexican currency, Viagra, and a host of other getaway goods in his newly purchased Mercedes. The Peterson family hires high-profile attorney Mark Garagos 
who performs a bunch of legal gymnastics to delay the case. Finally, a jury is seated, six women and six men, on May 27, 2004. On November 12, 2004, the jury returned a guilty verdict of first-degree murder of Lacey Peterson and second-degree murder of Connor Peterson, and the sentence was death. Uh, the evidence against, there wasn't really any direct evidence against Scott, but dogs caught her scent at the Berkeley Marina. A hair of Lacey's was found on a pliers on the boat of Scott's. The Amber Affair, of course, and um, basically the body, how it was right where he said he was fishing. So, you know, one plus one plus one equals, you know, you're guilty. So, of course, his family's still fighting the thing. Uh, his sister doesn't believe he's guilty. And, um, well, he is. That's my opinion. Thank you for watching. I'm the Doorman. We'll see you next Visitor's Day. And don't let me catch you in my gated community.